Com Air Flight 5191, a Bombardier CL600-100 with a passenger cabin capacity of 50, was a regularly scheduled flight from Lexington, Kentucky's Bluegrass Airport to Atlanta, Georgia's Hartsfield International Airport. There were 47 passengers and three crew members aboard. At the time of this accident, the Bluegrass Airport was nearing the end of a multi-year construction project. Airport improvements included shifting runway 0422 325 feet to the southwest to accommodate a longer runway safety area at the approach end of runway 22, relabeling existing taxiway connectors, and completing several other taxiway modifications. A notice to airmen had been issued concerning these changes. Low barricades with red flashing lights had been placed on the closed taxiway areas. Runway 0826 was 3,501 feet long, designated as daytime VFR use only, had no runway lighting, was painted to indicate a 75-foot width, and was primarily used for general aviation operations. Runway 0422 was used by commercial transport airplane operations, was 7,003 feet long, and was equipped with runway lighting which was on at the time of the accident. On August 27, 2006, at approximately 5.36 local time, the crew of Flight 5191 boarded the airplane and began normal pre-flight activities. Weather conditions at the airport were 8 miles visibility, broken clouds at 5,000 feet, and no precipitation. Night visual metrological conditions existed. Sunrise was at 7.03 and the moon was below the horizon. At approximately 5.48, the crew of Flight 5191 listened to the Automatic Terminal Information Service recorded message, which included identification that runway 22 was the active runway. The crew then reported to the FAA air traffic controller stationed in the Lexington Tower that they had received this information. At approximately 5.51, the controller provided the crew of Flight 5191 departure information for their planned flight to Atlanta. Approximately five minutes later, the flight crew began taxi and takeoff briefings. During these briefings, reference was made to runway 22 as being the takeoff runway planned for the flight. It was later determined by investigators that the manually selected heading bug of both pilots' multifunction displays had been set to the proper heading of 227 degrees, which corresponded to the magnetic heading of runway 22. At approximately 5.59, the captain commented that the airplane was ready to push back. Left and right engines were started at approximately 6 o'clock. Two minutes later, the crew reported to air traffic control that the airplane was ready to taxi, followed by instructions from the tower to taxi to runway 22. At the time of this accident, instructions provided by the controller to taxi to runway 22 authorized the airplane to cross runway 26, the intersecting runway, without stopping and requesting clearance to cross runway 26. The crew acknowledged receipt of these taxi instructions, including reference to runway 22 in their response, and began to taxi the airplane. At the same time that the crew began to taxi to runway 22, Skywest 6819, a CRJ-100, was cleared for takeoff on runway 22. At 6.03, the captain called for the taxi checklist to be completed. From approximately 6.03 to 6.04, while continuing to taxi, investigators determined that the flight crew engaged in conversation that was not pertinent to the safe operations of the flight. During this time frame, American Eagle 882, a CRJ-100, was cleared for takeoff on runway 22. At approximately 6.04, the first officer, who was to be the flying pilot of the flight to Atlanta, began the before takeoff checklist and indicated that the flight would be from runway 22. Also, at about 6.04, the captain, who had been taxiing the airplane, stopped the airplane at the hold short line for runway 26. In order to reach runway 22, the assigned runway, Com Air 5191 should have crossed the end of runway 26 and continued on the connecting taxiway to the hold short line for runway 22. The first officer then made an announcement over the public address system to welcome the passengers and then completed the before takeoff checklist. 
At about 6.05, while still at the hold short line of runway 26, the first officer told the controller that the Com Air flight was ready to depart. The controller then responded that the flight was to fly the runway heading and was cleared for takeoff. At this point, the captain then taxied the airplane across the hold short line for runway 26 and then called for the lineup checklist. The airplane then began to turn on to runway 26 and the first officer called the lineup checklist complete. At approximately 6.06, .06, the captain then turned control of the airplane over to the first officer to conduct the takeoff. After accepting control of the airplane in preparation for takeoff, engine takeoff thrust was set and the plane began to accelerate. During the takeoff roll, the first officer commented that the runway appeared to be weird, with no lights, followed by a reply from the captain of, yeah. Approximately eight seconds later, the captain called out 100 knots, followed seven seconds later with V1, and then rotate. Investigators concluded that the V1 callout was six knots early, while the command to rotate was 11 knots early. It was also believed that these early callouts may have been the result of the captain seeing the end of the runway rapidly approaching in the darkness. The airplane impacted an earthen berm 265 feet from the end of runway 26, became temporarily airborne, then struck trees and burst into flames. All 47 passengers and two of the three flight crew members were killed in the crash.